everybody, back here on Bullion here. Silver is probably one of the single most divisive investment products that you can look to buy on any market right now. And what I mean by that is that there are so many differing views, opinions, tactics, practicalities of paper, physical silver, premiums, all of those and many more play into a very confusing investment product, certainly when compared with its cousin, gold. There are a lot of people who think silver is the best thing since sliced bread and they'll buy nothing but this white shiny metal. And then there are the polar opposites, people who think it's impractical, never going to make you cash or money in the long run, and they'll steer clear of it, won't touch it with a 10-foot barge pole, and perhaps they'll just go for gold instead. And it can be very confusing for new and seasoned stackers alike. So in today's video, I aim to give an overview of some of the thoughts, opinions, and reasons why Silver can be seen quite negatively, but conversely, why it also can be seen quite positively with the aim of helping anybody out there, new or seasoned, to make up their own minds, which is the most important thing. Don't just take others' opinions. Formulate your own way of thinking that is best for you and your strategies. It's important to remember that I am making this video just for entertainment purposes. It's not financial advice and any financial decisions that you make having watched today's video are yours and yours alone. So what makes silver quite so divisive? That is, I guess, where I really want to start. And it can come down to the nitty gritty of just simple finances, money. You've got to look at this last couple of months as a prime example as to why people are somehow, or some people are very disheartened with silver as a performer on the market, certainly relative to gold. It has taken a big tumble in the last couple of months. It started to recover and at the end of last week we actually saw a, uh, a jump back up in prices a little bit, but ultimately it really underperformed in a crisis situation, in the brown stuff hit the fan scenario. Now there are arguments to be had about whether or not uh, this scenario that we're going through is a true sort of Mad Max scenario. I personally don't think so and I kind of am on the page that, you know, silver is that industrial metal. It is not a kind of monetary metal. It's still a monetary metal, but it's not predominantly a monetary metal, which is a really key difference between silver and gold and why it can also be viewed quite so negatively because silver has so much practicalities and use in markets all around the world for different applications in industry. It is very much used for that above monetary metals. So that is one of the main reasons why people don't like it because it's such a you know, it's such a manipulated market on that side of things. You just have to see how global production of electronics slowed down. I'm just trying to put this bar down gently because if I slam it down, the table jumps. It's so heavy. And, you know, markets are manipulated. We all know that. We all hear that. People say that silver is the most manipulated metal and the powers that be or the banks want to keep it low and they want to have as much of it as possible and get it as cheap as possible. Yes, there's obviously, you know, things at play beyond anybody's comprehension and or ability to affect, certainly on the smaller scale. And that is one of the reasons why people hate silver. Now, on the converse side of things, people absolutely love this stuff right now, gold. It has very, very much been seen as the go-to crisis metal, the one that you put your cash in and it will keep it safe compared with silver. And you've only got to look at this last year in performance to see that they are right. Gold is just so much better in that keeping your keeping your money safe for longer because it's not going to have this huge swing down. If anything, it just held its price and it's slowly growing in value and people still want it despite the ratios being at historic highs between gold and silver. So there are definitely people out there who hate silver for all of those reasons mentioned, manipulation, uh, you know, just it, it really is the big thing, the money loss thing there. It, people get disheartened when they see, on paper anyway, that their you know investment has gone down considerably, especially when they're holding gold as well and they see that that has gone up quite considerably. Certainly over late, the last two years or so, you know, you've, you've gone from like eight, sorry, well, 900 pounds an ounce gold to 1400 pounds an ounce gold. That's 500 pounds an ounce profit, whereas silver basically stayed the same if that gone down a little bit. So there's definitely significant differences between those metals. The last thing I want to mention before I um, kind of crack on with some of the positives on silver, I don't want this to be a completely negative video all about silver, is the practicalities of it. There are people, myself included, who really do not like the practicalities of silver. And 
one of those reasons is it's just sheer lack of value to weight ratio. Now it's still obviously a very valuable commodity, certainly compared with others like copper, for example. But right now with the gold silver ratio standing at 115 to one, uh, you know, this is probably more of a realistic ratio because you always have premiums and things on the silver. But um, you know, 100 ounces plus to one ounce worth of gold, you can see the significant difference there. If you are a higher budget stacker, you are going to struggle to have a significant amount of funds in silver and use it practically. You know, even just storing it is going to be difficult. You know, safety deposit boxes are only so big and you can have obviously significantly more cash put in them in gold than you can silver. So the practicalities of silver is always a concern. It's something that I've talked about here on the channel quite a lot and it's definitely something to think about. And one of the reasons why if you are on a slightly bigger budget or if you're on a smaller budget but over time, having a large amount of silver can actually be a real sort of hindrance if you're looking to then sell it on, send it off to a dealer it's gonna cost you an arm and a leg to post it. This bed bar, this 100 ounce monster bar is the newest addition to my melt stack. And what I mean by that is it's destined to be chopped up and melted down for backyard bullion hand pulled silver, I'm afraid. But um, it is absolutely gorgeous. It will be chopped up when I've run out of other silver, but it was on the silver forum at a good price. But the practicality of having a 100 ounce bar, it's so heavy, it cost 30 quid just to post it, 30 pounds just to post it. And you know, that's an awful lot. Whereas with gold, it's gonna be significantly less. So that's kind of the summary of the negatives. Um, you know, it, it, there are positives and I will go through those, but the negatives for some people are just too much and they really do put the kibosh on actually investing in silver, certainly over the longer period of time. Now, some of the positives, the first bit of the positive that I want to talk about is that silver's cheap. Silver's dirt cheap at the moment compared with gold, you could argue. With that ratio being over 100 to one right now, oh, it's so difficult to pick up this bar, over 100 to one right now, and uh, you know, having the just historic highs of ratios, it really does put things in perspective to say that silver really is cheap right now, and it's a very good buy. Yes, that is definitely true, but the premiums on silver are high for physical stuff. If you can get your hands on lower premium stuff, I was very fortunate with this 100 ounce bar to get it. Uh, in fact, if we can angle the camera, there we go. We've got 100 ounces above the monkey. That's pretty much how your ratio will play with the various premiums and things out there at the moment. You know, if you can get it at a low premium, then yeah, it, it, it arguably is a good thing and it will look to go up over time. And some people definitely think that silver will outperform gold in that long run because the ratio will equalize or not equalize, but it will go back down in the favor of silver. No, in the favor of gold, beg your pardon. So the, there'll be fewer ounces of silver per ounce of gold, which means that in theory, if you buy a lot of silver right now, you can trade it up and get extra gold at the other end. Or it means that the price of silver will go up relative to gold and you'll be quids in. So there's definitely people out there who think it is an undervalued metal right now. And I would tend to agree, certainly in these times, if you can get spot price comparisons, it looks very underpriced. But we all know that there are premiums on physical silver right now, and it is very hard to get hold of in bulk at decent prices. So that ratio is a little bit of a misnomer, and it's definitely one which should be watched quite carefully over time because as the physical premiums come down, that ratio will start to self-correct because there's, I just can't, see, you know, the demand will go up. It's obvious. There's 115 odd ounces to one of gold. It really will go down over time. And so that's a big thing that people really like and see. Now, the next thing about silver uh, being very, very popular out there is that people genuinely believe it is the metal of choice for any kind of world ending scenario. Now, I do not think that the scenario we're in is going to form the collapse of Western society and countries that we are uh, accustomed to and know about and see in this world. I do not think the dollar will collapse. I do not think the pound will collapse. I do not think that we are going to see a Mad Max world, a Mad Max scenario where silver becomes the new barter tool. I don't think that, but there are a lot of people out there who do, and there are good reasons why you can look at that and say, yeah, it's definitely a possibility with the amount of money that's being printed and inflation that's in, in, inevitable to come and the amount of hardship that we're gonna go through over this next couple of years with everything of the fallout of this current crisis we're going through, you can definitely see the plus side of having some of this in your possession. It will hold value and it will be potentially usable in the future. 
But to come back to the main point is that people think it will be the next money. They will think that silver is going to be the, you know, the, the thing that will save you, the thing that we'll be able to go down to the shops with and buy groceries with or buy fuel at the, at the petrol stations or gas pumps. It will be that monetary metal, certainly above gold. And if you're going down to you know, your grocery store and you're looking to buy your week's worth of groceries, all you have is a gold coin. They're not going to be able to break that change. But having silver, having smaller denominations of it, perhaps this is a bad example, having big kilo bars. Perhaps if you were buying a car, maybe you'd be able to use these. But you see the point. Silver is obviously less valuable than gold. It will have that, you know, it'll have that buying power much better for you in that situation than gold will. And historically, silver, of course, has been our mainstay of currencies for the last 5,000 years. Gold as well, but silver has been that everyday currency that we love, we love, we use, we have, and it will potentially come back as that currency. That's the way of thinking. And if it does, it will be the best thing to have by far. And that's what a lot of people think. Now, where does that all leave us in terms of divisive opinions, whether or not it's right for you. I think it's really important that everybody formulates their own opinions and strategies on silver. There are a lot of people out there who push agendas of silver and why it's the best thing to buy. It, you know, if, if it looks cheap right now, yeah, that's great, but it's not necessarily as cheap as you think, especially when looking to cash in and sell. Premiums are killers right now. Be very careful with that. So it's not all as good as you might think. And there are a lot of people out there, myself included, who will steer clear of it in the long run for other issues, storage, weight, uh, just general value to weight ratio. It is not great. And um, I haven't even touched on a few other things. Now, silver can be really challenging to have if you uh, if you have lots of different individual coins, you know, keeping track of them and keeping them in good condition, keeping them in capsules, keeping them in rolls and tubes and things. It's not easy. It's not practical. And uh, it, it is just difficult. And of course, the silver can tarnish and tone over time and milk spotting. There's just loads of different things that can be problematic with silver. Uh, that said, it is by far and away the more achievable metal for people to get. Oh, what a big bar. And from that point of view, you know, it is the metal for the masses. And I guess that's the one thing that really is in its favor is still that it is the cheap piece of metal that you can buy certainly relative to gold. Often people say this phrase, and I've heard it said on Yankee Stacking's channel an awful lot of times, which is, I think, a fantastic channel, by the way. If you haven't seen his channel, go and check him out. Uh, silver is the means by which you pay debts between people. It is how you pay people. Gold is the means by which countries pay debt to countries. So this stuff, is it out of reach of the average person? No, but silver? it's much more practical for everyday kind of scenarios. That said, I do think that there is a place in any stack, in any investment portfolio for a bit of both. I think silver has got room to grow and there's reasons why I still have and am buying silver, not just because of my uh, backyard bullion poured silver business, but also generally for the future. I do think that there is room for growth with silver. I do think that, I genuinely do. And I think it will come good in the end, whether it will go up to the shoot the moon scenario prices that we all want. Even if we do want them, I don't think that's even practical, but I, you know, who knows is the honest answer. And if those start to happen, then for me anyway, the ultimate goal is to get more of this stuff because I do genuinely think that this is better than silver. So whilst I agree that silver is very, very nice, it's very practical for a lot of longer term strategies, it is not necessarily the metal of choice for myself for the very long term. Gold is much more liquid, it's got much more practicalities in my mind. And uh, generally speaking, I would always look to have more gold than I would silver in terms of value. So that's my thoughts and opinions on the subject. I, I feel like we haven't even scratched the surface on some of these. It could be a 40 minute video. And I know that in the near future, we are planning, I mentioned Yankee Stacking earlier, we are planning another podcast with Yankee Stacking. And we are going to be talking all about this, pro this premise of the practicalities of silver and the love-hate relationship that a lot of stackers have out there. I would love to know your th thoughts and opinions on this subject. And if you have any specific questions that you want to put towards myself and or Yankee Stacking for that future podcast, then please do comment down below with those thoughts and opinions and questions. It really does help new and seasoned stackers alike. I know a lot of people get a lot out of these comment sections, so make sure you uh, hit, it up, hit it up down there. 
All I ask is to be respectful of mine and other people's opinions. We're all here to have a bit of fun and not get shouted at by internet trolls. Otherwise, that's basically it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, put a thumbs up. If you enjoy looking and salivating over this big, chunky 100 ounce bar, then let me know. It probably is going to be featured on In Focus Friday this Friday. So we'll look at it in a bit more detail and talk a little bit about it. I don't know. I haven't quite decided, so don't quote me on that, but we'll see. So otherwise, subscribe if you want to see videos from us in the future. Certainly if you want to see that podcast for, from me and Yankee Stacking at some point. Otherwise, big shout out as always to all health and key workers out there in this big wide world, keeping us healthy, safe and fed. Thank you so much for all of your hard work. Otherwise, stay safe, everybody. Have a fantastic week. We'll see you on the next one. As always, please make sure that you like, share, comment and subscribe for more.